Good afternoon. We are back with Think Tech. We are talking about Asia. And today we're doing a continuation of a prior program that I started. My name is Mark Schlob. Uh, I am the host of Law Across the Sea. And today we're reviewing and going back and talking a little bit more about Vietnam with Chuck Crumpton. And Chuck is an attorney, although he likes to be known more as a mediator and an arbitrator. And he has spent a, a lot of time in Vietnam, postgraduate and professionally, and has made many contacts in Vietnam and has continued them to this day and has learned a lot about it, worked there, lived there, and really has a passion for Vietnam. And we're going to ask him, put him on the spot a little bit, ask him some questions about Vietnam. And Chuck, good to see you again. Welcome. Mark, a pleasure. Good to be back with you. Uh, you know, Vietnam has, um, it's in the news a lot now. Uh, and last time we spoke about this, uh, about a month ago, on Law Across the Sea, uh, it seemed to me that Vietnam's kind of coming out of its shell and is having a little more relations with the outside world than during the times when we grew up. What, what's going on with Vietnam? What, what's happening over there politically and uh, within, within the country with its people? What, what, what's happening? A, a large and compound set of questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, thought, I said I'd put you on the spot. Yeah. Well, I think it's kind of been evolving in the sense that uh, Vietnam has always envisioned itself as having an important role, a constructive role, and a different and very independent role in Southeast Asia. They recognize that with China, that nearby, and with the long history that Vietnam has with China, including thousand years of Chinese uh, occupation, um, and some continuing tensions and uh, strains politically and militarily, and then things that have been going on in what Vietnam and other Southeast Asian countries call the East Sea, China calls South China Sea. Uh, there are just a lot of reasons for Vietnam to enable its relationships to become more public, more visible, uh, and more connected on a larger and more international scale. So it's, it's kind of a little bit like, and they're, they're not like a youth who's growing into adulthood because Vietnam has over 4,000 years of culture. They've dealt with the Chinese, the French, the Americans, the Russians, and many, many others. So they're certainly not unsophisticated. Uh, but they recognize their size, their history, their economic and political background and some of the things that may restrict or limit their ability to have influence internationally. A and I think they're a very relationship building country, both a at a personal level among the people and Vietnam itself as a country. And it's a very different approach to international politics than most Western com countries use. It, it is, however, when you think about it, the approach to politics and economics and military relations that really makes the most sense for sustainability. Because when a country's independence is threatened, it depends upon and survives and thrives by those relationships with its allies, with its neighbors, with those who share core values that transcend some of the conflicts that may exist on more quantitatively measured labels like economic, political, and things like that. So, I don't know, I'm not trying to beat around the bush, but it's it, saying in as few words as possible, I, I think Vietnam is sensing its time as a significant, although small, size role player coming. Mm -hmm and they've prepared themselves for that literally since the end of the military activities during the American War in Vietnam. And that's 41 years now. 
So that's, it is not a youth, it's not a teenager. This is a middle-aged growing entity that's entering the stage with the experience and sophistication in history of someone who knows itself, who knows its neighbors, who reads people and other countries and organizations pretty well, and is very well, well geared for survival and for sharing and teaching things that can be of huge benefit to younger countries, including the U.S. Well, you know, I, I sense that both the U.S. and China are focusing on Vietnam. Uh, and I'm not sure why, and I kind of want to, I'd like you to, to tell me, because you say it's a small country. Now, you know, in my, what I, what, what, what little I know is that China has often been at war with Vietnam mm -hmm. in the past. The U.S. was at war in Vietnam recently compared to China. And yet uh, there seems to be, uh, maybe that's the relationships that, that you were talking about, but there, there also seems to be some friendliness towards, towards both and, and some uh, caution towards both. What, what is the, the feeling, I mean, why, first of all, I guess I want to ask you, why is the U.S. and why are China both kind of competing for Vietnam's attention? What, what's that about? Multi-part answer to that. I mean, that's a really astute perception, and I think a very accurate one. Recognizing that actually even after the end of the American War military hostilities, China actually had some military incidents with Vietnam, some border incidents after that. So things have not been comfortable on the military front or very much on the political front. And yet at the same time, you're exactly right about the duality in that Chinese businesses are extremely active and influential and large in Vietnam. Uh, there are those who think that the primary objective for that of China is to wield a level of influence that would enable them to exert a lot of pressure on Vietnam's choices and directions, politically, economically. Um, my personal response, I'm kind of biased, good luck with that. Um, they, they tried for a thousand years and then they left. They've had some military skirmishes and that hasn't gone so well for them. And they're doing what they're doing in the South China Sea and they're getting away with a lot over there, which is interesting because the countries that have the political and military force to exert some counter influence to that uh, are decidedly and consciously and intentionally not doing so. First and foremost among those, the U.S. Um, there are those who say the U.S. is so intimidated by and afraid of China and offending China that it doesn't want to do anything to put them off. You know, I, I don't think we can totally discredit that. Uh, if you look at the conduct of China in the East Sea, the territorial acquisition, what has now been found by the international court as utterly lacking in legal or historical basis, we haven't seen that kind of legally unjustified and historically unjustified expansion since World War II with Hitler um, and some occasions by Japan. But to simply, and it's not even turning the other cheek, I mean, it's literally intentionally standing back and not taking a position. Why would the U.S. not support the Philippines in the arbitration, given the common interest between the U.S. and the Philippines, and certainly common interests that the U.S. shares with other Asian well, countries? With respect to uh, Vietnam specifically, they have an interest, I think it's, is it, what is it, the, the Paracels, is that correct? Right, and, and the Spratleys. And the Spratleys. Right. 
the, and those, others. The, those are islands uh, off Vietnam, and I guess there's there they may be oil rich areas, and that uh, may that have something to do with all of this. And and by the way, from what I've read about Vietnam, they've never been afraid of the Chinese per se. They've That's never, true. They, they've always they've always fought, and they've never been afraid of the United States. That's true too. Uh, or the French, or the Russians. They, or they, they've else. always fought. They might have been outgunned, yeah. but but they 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 never backed down. Right. Uh, as, from what I could see. Right. And and so. So, but unlike us, the Vietnamese don't invade. Right. They, they, they protect their own they people, their, own their land, country. their country. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody comes in and attempts to assert control in ways that are not supportive of the best interests of the people and country of Vietnam, Vietnam will resist right. in whatever ways it finds effective. Sometimes it will just outlast them. Sometimes it will actually militarily defeat them as they did France. Sometimes they will outlast them culturally, as they did with the Chinese over a thousand-year period, um, develop their own language and some of those things. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the South China Sea or the, mm -hmm. the EC, EC whatever. or whatever okay. it's called. But uh, but before I, I go there, so so we we have uh, China trying to um, continue or 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 to get great influence in Vietnam of some sort, perhaps. Right. And the U.S. has this this pivot towards Asia, as it's called, mm -hmm. and maybe they're trying to get trade or absolutely in, 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 in some way have more influence. And that mostly seems to be from Obama, and maybe his his background with Asia seems to be pushing towards that, from what I can see. So you have them, those two great powers, competing for influence and trade, perhaps. And and I, I think that. Uh, I can understand that. Now, what what does Vietnam want from China and the U.S.? What what is, I mean, is, is it just playing them off against each other, or is is there more to it? What what's that? That is another astute perception. We need to remember historically that Ho Chi Minh's plan at the end of the American War was to essentially play the Chinese off against the Russians, to ally with the Americans, and to rebuild and redevelop the country with the Americans' participation and support, not as dominant one way or the other, but as partners. And people forget that Vietnam's declaration of, in Vietnam's constitution and essentially Bill of Rights declaration of independence draw very heavily from ours. And that Ho Chi Minh during his time in France, in Paris, was extremely strongly influenced by Hamilton and Franklin and Pain and the American thinkers of the 18th century and their thoughts about the connection between equality and independence as the source of sustainability of a country. And Ho Chi Minh was wise enough to see the common ground with socialism and the ability to use that common ground to coexist even with Russian communism for a sufficient period of time to become free of it and to wave goodbye to the Russians as they had to the French, the Americans, and the Chinese before. And so your perception about sort of playing off and striving for their own independence, I think is spot on from the history of Vietnam, from the leadership that has been given, and from the things that have worked for them in the past. What's interesting about that is the flip side of that coin is that I believe Vietnam being a relationship building oriented country culturally and hopefully now politically as well is recognizing that in order to do that it needs to build the best relations possible with its own neighbors and through that build to the larger connections to the Western powers US Europe Australia some of the others um, and it's it's a step process. And so you see Vietnam for the last 10, 15 or more years having spent a great deal of concerted, subtle, under the radar effort building relationships in ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And one of the 